Hi ladies, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to share with you this look. I'm going to teach you how I created this look using really accessible makeup products so that you can elevate your Christmas day and feel glamorous and sparkly all day long with minimal effort. If you're new here, I would love you to subscribe and perhaps share this video with your friends. I aim to bring content every... If you're ready, let's get Christmas started. So the first thing that I've done is apply my skincare and then I've applied the Aborian CC Cream, which is this one here, which I absolutely love, and the Super BB Cream for my dark shadows under my eyes and any blue kind of purple pigmentation. And my absolute favorite foundation of the moment right now is this one here. I can't rave about it enough. It's the Wet and Wild Dewy Foundation. They do do it in uh, matte as well. I prefer the Dewy. I like the texture on my skin. It feels very premium for $4.99, $5.99 from Amazon Prime. It's absolutely fab. I totally recommend it. I've also gone over with a touch of bronzer, just my Chanel Les Beige, just to give myself a little bit of color because it's all about Christmas glamour. And I wanted to feel glowy, but not too overdone. And now I'm going to try the Charlotte Tilbury palette. So the palette that I'm going to use is the Charlotte Tilbury Dreams Pillow Talk Dreams palette. This is it just here. I'm going to be fairly conservative with my application. I'm not really wanting a full on dark, smoky eye. I want my eyes to look pretty and I'm going to wear a red lip. So we want to make sure that we've got the balance. I do have quite a hooded eye. My right eye is fairly hooded as you can see. So I'm going to start with this shade just here. It is quite a dark palette and I want to be careful that I don't overload my eyes straight away and then end up having to back pedal. I have got asymmetry in my eyes. I've always had it. I think most of us have a different side. We're not symmetrical. I think we'd look a bit weird if we were symmetrical. But this eye, my right eye, is particularly hooded compared to this eye and also appears a little smaller because of the folds on my lid. So I want to be very careful not to make anything look too hooded. And I'm going to show you how I do that with a little trick that I learned that just enables my eyeshadow to give the illusion of more lift. So taking that, I'm just going to tap the excess off of my brush. And first of all, I'm going to come up above my crease and almost come in a straight line. I don't want to come down because that will give the impression or the appearance of the eye looking more hooded. And I'm going to do the same on my right. So first of all, the left, and you can see straight away, it straight away gives the appearance of more space. It's, so I'll now do my other side, exactly the same, just coming over almost a straight line. I want to say like a straight line, but it's not quite a straight line but not coming down too heavy. So there you have it. So you can see all I've done is put the color just straight across here. I haven't come down. And in fact, top tip, if you've got hooded eyes, is to just create an, a line, almost like a line coming from the corner of the outside of your eye to where your brow ends and don't allow any powder, any shadow, any color to come lower than that. So that is my base color. I'm now going to bring it just a little bit lower. Now that I've kind of, what I've done is I've set the bar, I've raised the height ever so slightly. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more, but not too much. I don't want to make it, I don't want to come lower. I just want to give myself a bit more even color. So I'm coming in, I'm just going to pat that down on the outside edge of my eye, but not going too far over. If you're like me and your skin is folding and it's crinkly and it feels heavy and it feels difficult to apply your eyeshadow, pat it as opposed to windscreen wiper. This will help with the product getting on the skin, but here's what we're going to do later. We're going to blend it all in. 
So now I'm going to apply that same colour, almost like a wash, but very, very lightly all across my lid. So going in again, tapping the excess, you can even pat it on your hand just to get rid of too much of the colour. And I'm applying it like a wash just all the way over, just giving that whole lid, my whole eye, a wash of that beautiful colour. It's a lovely colour. So that's it, it's just given it a lovely wash of colour. Now, while I've got that colour, I'm going to do my under eyes. Now you might think that this is a bit soon, but it just sets the eyes straight away. I'm going with a liner, and all I'm going to do is run the same colour just underneath my lashes, only on the outside. Same on the other side. Can just bring that out either side. So I've just used this colour here in the palette. I'm now going to go in with the shimmer and I'm going to be careful. I'm not going to go overboard with the shimmer. I'm just going to run my finger and I'm actually going to use the what looks like a rose gold. So this colour here, I'm going in and I'm just going to pop a little bit of that in the middle of my lid. So just patting it here. And then I'm going to go in with the lighter shade and do the corner of my eye, just here. The reason I like to use my fingers is because it minimizes fallout, but I have got quite a bit of fallout happening anyway, but that's okay, we can clean that up later. I'm just going to bring it in, just gently come round with my brush, ever so gentle around the eyes, and the same on the other side. Now I will clean up the bit of fallout that I've got in a minute. Now I'm going in with the darker shade. So this is where I'm going to be a little bit careful because it could be disaster area. I might make everything too heavy. So what I'm going to do is be really, really careful and precise. I'm going to use a, more of a tapered brush and I'm going to be careful not to use too much. I'm only putting it on the very tip of my brush, patting off the excess, and I'm just going to go, I'm going to stamp it along my lash line and slightly come up. Same on the other side. There you go. So it gives a little bit more drama to the eye. I'm going to go in and do just a little bit more. This time I'm going to skim it across the lash line and just come up. There you go. So this looks a little heavier than this. This is mainly because of the light that I've got here. Now I'm going to blend that in. We don't want to leave it like that because it does look a little bit disconnected. So taking another fluffy brush, I'm going to just blend that in and make it just, I don't want to move it. I don't want to move the dark into the lovely color that we've created. I just want to diffuse it slightly, make it look like it's completely cohesive. So that is the result of blending out that darker shade. It is quite a dark, dramatic shade. And what I didn't want to do is go full pelt and then end up regretting it and having to start again. So you can see what I've done is I've just created the illusion of lift, little bit of shimmer, not too much. I might go back in to the corners with a bit more shimmer, but for now, I'm now going to come up to the tops of my brows. So just on my brow bone here, I'm using a matte, very, very matte shade just to give it a finished look, really. I'm not really looking for anything sparkly up here. I just wanted to mattify everything down. I've got a lash line brush and I'm going to just come along my lashes just to give them a bit more definition. So taking a loaded brush and just coming along ever so carefully and flicking up so we have a little bit of definition. So that has just given my eyes a little bit more definition, just that little bit of line. You could use an eyeliner pencil, obviously, but I thought I'd just go in with the palette. Now I'm going to do my mascara. My favorite mascara is the Maybelline Sky High at the moment. That I, to be honest, I have lots of favorites, but this one, I love the coverage. I really like the spoolie. It's very, very precise. 
I think it just gives a really good black and it lengthens the lashes and I find it really easy to use. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's amazing what mascara can do to your eye makeup. You might have felt like you'd made a red hot mess, but just a little bit of blending and then a touch of mascara can really lift and pull together the look. I'm now going to do my brows. I did dye them earlier, so they're looking a bit dark, but that's fine. I mean, I will do a tutorial on eyebrow tinting for those of you that perhaps don't do it at home or are too afraid, it's really easy. And yes, I have gone a bit dark, but that will fade in a couple of days. Using a brow gel called Set and Forget, and this actually is from the supermarket Aldi, and it is a dupe for Benefit. It is a really, really good one actually, and I do like it. So I'm just going in and taming my brows. I don't pluck my brows apart from a few little straggly bits down here. I just feel that I need to hold on to those hairs for as long as possible. Now I'm going to do a little bit of blusher on my cheeks. I don't want to go full cheeks because I'm doing eyes and lips as the party centerpiece. So I'm going to use a Beauty Pie Cream Blush. It's called Fresh Faced. It's, I think it's the Super Cheek range. It's a really lovely cream blush. I'm going to just tap it on quite high up. I don't want to drag my face down. I want to keep it quite high. You can probably hear my bracelets jingling in my microphone as I'm doing this. I like to keep my blush quite high on my cheekbones. I feel that it is a little bit more rejuvenating. It gives the appearance of a lift. If we put our cheek blush, our blush too low on the apples, that can actually make things look a little heavier and it can actually inadvertently age us a little bit. Occasionally I will use a brush for this and I will just pat it into the pot and then I will stipple it with the brush but I always go back with my fingertips just because the warmth of your skin will help the product to really sink in and connect with the rest of your makeup. Now this obviously is an optional thing. I like to give myself a little bit of colour over the bridge of my nose and just the tip of my nose, just to give it that kind of little sun-kissed glow. Now I wouldn't normally use a highlighter, but because this is a Christmas look, I'm going to use a little bit of Iconic. This is an Iconic sheer blush, but it also gives a little bit of glow. Not too illuminating that it actually looks like you can see from space, but it's just a nice little touch just to have at the top of your cheeks and a little bit towards the apples just to give you a little bit of candle glow. It's almost like that beautiful glow that you get when you are sat near candlelight. Next, I'm going to do my lips and I'm opting for a warm red lip. I'm opting for this color, which kind of sits on the border of warm red and cool red. So that's my red lip choice. I hope you like it too. It's a beautiful matte velvet lip ink from Bourgeois. I absolutely love this formula. It goes on just so silky smooth. It has no fragrance and then it mattifies, but it doesn't mattify dry, if you know what I mean. You obviously could add a gloss. I prefer not to add a gloss with red lipstick. I feel it's a statement in its own right. It doesn't need anything else. Also, this is stain resistant. In fact, let's do the test. There we go, absolutely nothing, no transfer whatsoever. So that's fabulous, obviously, if you're out and about and greeting loved ones, and who knows, having a kiss under the mistletoe. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, perhaps give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't done so already, I would love you to subscribe. I'm bringing out content every single week that will help you not only look good, but feel great too. Until next time, bye for now.